You know who I can do without? I can do without the people in the video store. Which ones? All of them. This is Massive Late Fee with Mike and Mark. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my co-host, Mike. How you doing, Mike? Not too bad. And yourself? Good. We're doing good. Good week here at Massive Late Fee. I I have uh, gotten better from either coronavirus or just a cold. <laughs> whatever. Well, that's good to hear. Whatever it was, I feel better now, so that's good. A belated happy birthday to uh, your mother-in-law and your uh, son. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yep, they had oh, they, they had birthdays uh, this this last week and uh, or this week here, I guess. I, I don't know. Are they are they a day apart? Yes. Yeah, one's the twenty third, oh, one's the twenty fourth. That's that's crazy. But uh, yeah, they uh, unfortunately we obviously couldn't have any kind of real party for them or anything like that. But uh, you know we we have stuff planned. Uh, we were going to invite you guys out, obviously, uh, and everything, but we're, uh, we've got, uh, we're going to make some plans once, once things calm down, we'll, we'll plan something for, you know, a couple months after everything has calmed down. And Yeah. Yeah. Going to be a lot of makeup, uh, stuff, but that's just how it has to be. Yep. But, uh, on to one thing that we don't have to reschedule is the parents guide game. <laughs> So this week uh, I've got a I've got something I think I think you should be able to get this I believe I'm all I'm like ninety ninety eight and a half percent sure that you have seen this movie I mean I don't see how you I think we might have even watched this movie together I don't know see I think we're in the same boat here I don't know for sure you've seen this movie but I would be surprised if you haven't yeah yeah that's that's exactly where I am too. So, uh, under profanity, uh, some mild innuendos and jokes, which doesn't really tell you much. <laughs> uh, the, uh, yeah, you want you want to take a guess? Breaking two. Ooh, that's very close, but no. Um, it's actually breaking. No. <laughs> uh, Fuck. Let's see. A, a nude statue is shown from the waist up. If you blink, you'll miss it. Jay and Silent Bob reboot? No. <laughs> I should, you know, it's funny. I never even thought about doing that one, but we should. Uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah. A man talks about finding a fully nude woman in his car. Ellie Confidential? No. Uh, let's see. Last one in Sex and Nudity. Uh... There's a blurry and stylized flashback of a rape. It happens quick, so most mostly of it (laughs) is off screen. It happens quick, so mostly of it is off screen. That's the sentence they went with. Pretty woman? No. Uh, Let's see. Profanity. Uh, Nonstop language. I, I, yeah, they, they use language throughout the course of the entire film. That's is true. Although I would say there are certain areas in the movie where it does stop and there's no dialogue for at least a couple seconds. Uh, let's see. Cocksucker is used at least eight times and then 100 uses of fuck along with other uses of profanity such as shit, bitch, asshole, and dick. Huh. Jackie Brown. No. No, no N word in there. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. That would have really. I was thinking, well, I think Quentin Tarantino's birthday was recently. I'm like, hey, this is one of his movies. But yeah, you're right. There would have been at least one N word in there said by a white character. Right. Most most of the time played by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Violence and gore. A man is shot in the head. A little blood is shown. The road. No. It's a really good guess, too. Uh, two men are killed in an elevator, leaving bloody smears and a little bit of brain matter. Oh, I think, I believe this is, uh, what the hell, The Usual Suspects. That is correct. 
Yeah, that one definitely that clue definitely gave it away. That that's pretty cool. A scene where uh, Stephen Baldwin's character right. kills two men. Crowd's going nuts because you got it. Thanks, guys. Although, <laughs> really, we should not be, have gathered in yeah. such a large uh, mass. <laughs> exactly. I don't know why. I I think finally, finally, they decided to show up and. I think everyone in the crowd has coronavirus already. Like they've already gotten it, so they're using some sort of herd immunity. I don't think it works like that. I don't either. But uh, but they decided to, and we we couldn't bar them. Uh, so uh, Governor uh, Whitmer, don't don't come down on us for having a gathering of more than seven people. Great. All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, puzzling that one out. Wouldn't that suck if you're like finally going to go to your first orgy and then this order comes down and you're like, ah, (laughs) jeez. I guess I could have five people, but it's not really an orgy. Right. I I got the courage up enough. I got the, I got the leather pants that I need for it. Uh, I got got five crates of uh, whipped cream. Yep, exactly. You know what I mean? That's right. Uh, The Astro Glide just came in the mail. Oh, man, we're going to be cleaning a lot of uh, keyboards with this uh, air in a can, huh, guys? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, man. Those poor people. I yeah. assume they're in Florida. Yeah, yeah they probably are. <laughs> oh, man. And not the good Florida. No. No, not, not tourist Florida. Real Florida. <laughs> yes. Where it's even more south than the south. Oh, yeah. The, it's it's so the south that you can get. It's so funny because, you know, I think, I don't remember who it was that I was talking to, but they were like, oh, yeah, I went to Florida. And I was like, I didn't realize that they have southern accents in Florida. And I was like, yeah, that's because you've been to all the parks and stuff like Like, you flew in to, <laughs> you flew into Orlando Airport, went right to a park, and then flew home. If you drive around real Florida, you know, go to a Waffle House. Yeah, they, they have southern accents for sure. <laughs> Do you think that if you get to the uh, very end of uh, the Keys, that you'll find the most purest American of all? That's it's definitely possible. The most there's probably a prof a prophecy somewhere that <laughs> they'll be born there at the tip of the key, where the nuclear blast went off when the uh, Crimson Jihad was trying to blow up uh, Atlanta or DC or wherever. All right, it'll be the most the most patriotic. Oh, that was Florida. That, that was Florida, I believe, actually. The most patriotic, true American of all. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> get, uh, get on the chopper. <laughs> get those immigrants on the chopper. Those queer sexuals. <laughs> uh, he, he, he took some heat because he was, he tweeted out, hey, stay in your house and everything, self-quarantine, help flatten the curve and all that stuff. But he was sitting in a hot tub smoking a cigar. <laughs> While he was doing it in his house, in his mansion, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and people were all pissed. But I mean, I'm like, first of all, I'll I'll be the first to admit, I fucking love Arnold Schwarzenegger. The more I read about this this guy, the more I love about him. Um, his scandal with his maid only made me like him more. Exactly, because <laughs> no one likes his no one liked his ex wife. Now Maria Shriver, that bag of bones. Uh but. <laughs> No offense, Maria Schreiber, but uh, Sergeant Schreiber, your daughter's, uh, you know, very uh, good person, I'm sure. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, but no, I, I like, there's a lot of things I like about him, but so I might be a little biased here, but everyone's like coming down on him. Oh yeah. You know, it's easy to say from your hot tub with your cigar and all that stuff, but it's like, what, first of all, he's right. Like everything he said was correct is what everyone should be doing and what do you want him to do pretend that he's living in like a trailer or something like that like that's <laughs> the house he has get over it yes it really bothers me it's like so well, he's just supposed to pretend that he's poor this dude came from fucking nothing <laughs> and and struggled uh you know like worked hard took a lot of drugs made himself into a uh a superstar in bodybuilding and then said i'm gonna go and i'm starting to sound like bill burr this the bill burr ran about him but and i don't want to go all the way but uh you know seriously he really worked fucking hard and got what he has love him or hate him about 
his politics or what he thinks or whatever. He was totally right in what he was saying. People should be staying home. And yeah, he was successful and has a nice house. If that, it, that first of all, that's if that's all you want out of life is to have money, then just do that. Forego. You can do that. You just have to, uh, yeah, like you were going to say, you have to uh, study for a long time. Yep. Put in very long hours. I mean, you can, almost anyone can achieve that, but it's a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Forego family, forego dates, forego like any kind of fun or whatever, and, and put hard work in if you think that that's all that matters in life. But it's not. I mean, you know, there are way, there are things. I, I am happy because I love my wife and my kids and everything, and I like doing this show with you. I like my friends like you, Mike. I would much rather have my life, even though I don't have nearly as much money, that I would have Arnold Schwarzenegger's life, to be totally honest, and I'm younger than him. So, so um, I'd rather uh, I'd rather have what I have. But if that's all you care about, then and that's that's what it comes off as to me. I mean, not to get on a soapbox, but it comes off to me as like sour grapes of like, uh, oh, this guy's got all this money and stuff. And it's like, well, you know, if that's what you want, then you know, don't go out and fucking party every weekend. Uh, y- you know, fucking study and, you know, put the work in and everything. And then you could make a bunch of money too. If you think that's all that matters. Did you still open a beer? I wish I did. <laughs> no, it's, I heard like a bottle cap. I thought it's just water. Whatever you say, pal. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I know Ar- Arnold Schwarz- Schwarzenegger is out here, but what about his friend, uh, Danny DeVito? What would he have to say about this? <laughs> <laughs> he says some. Um, <laughs> Swordsanger says uh, with twins, <laughs> and he says, uh, "Oh, of course, <laughs> of course." I saw the I saw the resemblance right away. <laughs> it's like looking in a mirror. Thanks. Nice. Oh. <laughs> oh, good job. DeVito. Good job. See, kids, hard work pays off. That's right. If you want to do, if you if you think all that matters is Danny DeVito impersonation, you can do it. We can do it. All right. You got a film for me? Uh, yeah, like you said earlier, I'm sure you've seen this. We may have seen this together. I don't think so, but it's possible. Um, so I'm guessing you've seen this, but I don't know for sure. All right. A man shoots another man in the head. Smoke is seen in the gunshot wound. Uh, the Departed. No. Okay. The protagonist shoots three men with a Tommy gun off screen, but the aftermath is seen in a victim's bloodied face is seen. Hmm. With a Tommy gun? <laughs> off screen. Shoots... Thompson machine gun. Hmm. That narrows it down a little bit because there's not a ton of movies with Tommy guns. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde? No. And not teenage Bonnie and Klepto Clyde. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that chick from, uh, from uh, what, you know, Swing on a Star, uh, whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. It was in that movie. Maureen O'Flanagan. Out of this world? Out of this world. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Remember uh, her. That was that was odd. I, I never put that together. A man leaves a crime scene where he has stabbed a man. He mutters, "He raped my wife." As the police escort her away. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Uh, Sin City. No. All right. A man's chest is covered in blood with a knife stuck in it. He begins to squirm, so a man gags him. Sounds familiar. A Thompson submachine gun. Uh, um. Hmm. I will say this is The Untouchables. It must be. No, sorry. I wasn't clicked on the right screen. <laughs> The protagonist shoots down a crowd of men with a Tommy gun. They fire back at him, but one by one they fall down, peppered with bullets, smoke coming from the gunshots. The protagonist then kills their leader off screen with heavy gunfire. This is an art- artistically filmed scene, and there's no blood. 
Huh. The protagonist. So there's a central protagonist to this film, armed with a Tommy gun the entire time. Uh huh. Dick Tracy. No, I don't believe Dick Tracy has a Tommy gun. Yeah, I don't think so either. A watch phone, though. <laughs> Great. A man is seen in a bathtub. He is naked, but nothing is seen. Hmm. I'm trying to think what else this could be. It's that's not the Godfather. Um. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Scarface. No. All right. Damn it. A brothel is seen inside. A- it's a glow and mentally a brothel scene what inside a club oh, okay with red lights aglow and men leaving rooms in 30s prostitutes are seen with men this is in passing the owner asks why a man is there and says don't imagine it's the p word hmm <laughs> huh is he an old prospector that's <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's the way they edited this word. They just put a uh, asterisk in the middle of it. They didn't excise any of the uh, letters. Oh, okay. That's weird. So I understand the purpose of the asterisk. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Is it? No, it wouldn't be that. Uh, brothel inside a club. Is it? Um. Hmm. Is it Robbo and the Seven Hoods? <laughs> what? That's a Frank Sinatra movie. <laughs> no. Do you uh, do you concede? Oh, is that the last clue? No, there's more, but they're. Uh, I don't think you're gonna get this one, Mark. <laughs> oh. Maybe you haven't seen it. I'm sort of thinking you haven't seen this one. Is it Last Man Standing? No. All right. Um, give me one. I'll of give the, you a cl- Give me one. Of the I'll give you ones. one clue. Yeah. Okay. Paul Newman. Paul Newman's in? Oh, um, I have, I think I've seen it. I'm trying to think which one it would be. No, that's too violent. It's not the sting. Uh, Cool Hand Luke? Daniel Craig is also in this. Daniel Craig and Paul Newman. (laughs) Okay, um, well, that's a much later... uh, in his Cowboys and Indians or Cowboys and Aliens or whatever. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what else has Daniel Craig been in? Um, this is an early role for Daniel Craig. Hmm. Uh, Paul Newman and Daniel Craig. So it, I know was, Hey, wait, I've got a question for you. Had, Jude Law is also in this movie. <laughs> um, Can you see Paul Newman picking grapes in this, in this movie? I, for one, would love to see Paul Newman be crazy in this it, movie. Yeah, I think uh, that, no. I think everyone would. Um, I mean, <laughs> okay, so Jude Law. Oh, 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 oh. Um, okay, and it's it's obviously it's um, older. I mean, not older, but it's uh, the uh, other actor who I'm not going to name uh, was uh, recently diagnosed with the coronavirus. Oh, is it? Uh, oh, Paul Newman was in that. Um, uh, Road to Perdition. Road to Perdition. Okay, yeah, I haven't actually seen that movie. That's um, okay. Yeah, the clues weren't very great either. They were all like, "This guy shot this guy." I'm like, I don't think you're gonna, you know, get. That's um, a uh, is that a Coen Brothers movie? Sam Mendes. Okay, I know it's based on a comic book, or based yeah. on comic book characters or something like that. Not them, but characters based on them. Exactly. Oh yeah, but uh, no, I've I've wanted to see it. I've heard it was pretty good. I think you like that movie, right? Yeah, I like it. It's a pretty good movie. Well, speaking of good movies, um, let's talk about uh, Amazon. <laughs> no, Amazon. yeah, I actually before we get into what we saw this uh, this week and everything, I. I would happen to be just kind of browsing around on Amazon. I've been looking for some different things that, you know, we might need on Amazon, different food items, stuff like that, things that, that the stores are out of. Um, 
I was looking up toilet paper on Amazon, which, you know, is pretty, they're, they're gouging prices big time. So we didn't order anything, but, um, I came across this woman, uh, her, her username is mama C. Uh, she's from Goodyear, Arizona. Her about says, don't mess with my kids. (laughs) Now this is, this is why I decided to look up, uh, the, all the products she reviews, um, because on Amazon, uh, someone, I don't know who it was, was selling 20 rolls of toilet paper um, for, I think it was like $28 or something like that, or $30. And her review <laughs> is one star, and it says, made in all caps, China, <laughs> with a period and then an exclamation point, no gracias, <laughs> exclamation point. And then she says, really, China? Three question marks. Isn't China reason why we're all desperate and out of toilet paper? Two exclamation points. Stop selling items that come from China. A space and then an exclamation point. We don't want to wipe our bums with toilet paper from where this Kung flu virus came from. (laughs) With I, I think did uh, somebody <laughs> did this reviewer uh, write it right into us last week? Uh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> but so I read that review and I was like, oh my god, let me see what other reviews she's posted. Um, and I think we find out some really interesting things about her. <laughs> so uh, this is on uh, <laughs> the an item Star Top Boots for Pets, <laughs> pets anti-skid shoes um and they show a little puppy wearing these like boot like they look like the booties that uh the cable installer would wear to not track mud and stuff on your carpet when coming into your house uh she gave that one star said don't waste your money boo-hoo very uncomfortable my little doggy did not enjoy walking with these things (laughs) um she also let's see she gave one star to a night light uh it says don't bother no bueno didn't even light (laughs) so is she like is she part spanish her her avatar is a picture of a cat and then she has the the like the wallpaper thing which is a picture of a dog um i hope i I don't know if she's calling the pets her her children (laughs) when she says don't mess with my kids or if she no that's true. She actually does have kids because we I found this out uh, through some other stuff. Uh, she really liked the Jan Sports Super Backpack for her seven year old. Um, let's see. I think there was one or two more really funny ones. <laughs> she got some tempered glass protector for her uh, Nintendo Switch, which apparently works really well. Let's see. Okay, uh, cell phone holder for car air vent. Um, it looks terrible, too. It's one of those things that just clips on the uh, thing. And she says, nope, don't work. Didn't like how it would not hold up my iPhone X. It kept falling off. So she's got, she's got, some, she's got some money, obviously. She's buying a lot of stuff on Amazon, by the way. But uh, I think there's what one. What if this is a celebrity? Who do you think the celebrity is? Ooh, Mama C celebrity. So she uh, she calls it the Kung Flu virus. <laughs> I think it's probably, if I had to guess, I would say it's Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, and this is what she's really like. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing Emilio Estevez. Oh, Emilio Estevez. It could be. Um, well, Emilio allegedly didn't like the Sherpa lined boys hoodie. What the? What is a Sherpa lined boys hoodie? <laughs> They kill Sherpas. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. T- Tanze Norgay gave his life for this for this hoodie. Uh, poorly made. I bought two of these hoodies, one for my 10-year-old, and it was good. Quality of it. one for myself. I'm a million of this. I'm a <laughs> small man. <laughs> Quality of this sweater was poor. Front zipper was broken, and it would not zip. When I did manage to zip, it would not, it, w- uh, it would pop o- open. It would pop on open. <laughs> It will pop on open. That sounds like Emilio Estevez. I think you're right. Then my brother Charlie bled all over it. No boy, no. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's okay. I got the no point of connection now. Well, it's it's not good if anyone bleeds on anything. No, but I mean, I got the yeah because they're they're Estevez, sure. <laughs> that yeah, sense. that's why that's why he speaks Spanish, right? That's, that was a clue. It's like the masked singer, but it's the masked uh, Amazon reviewer, right? Oh, all the products are no longer available, so I can't see what it is. But it says talk about ripoff. Had a huge hole in the leg, not stitched right. Anyway, cute on. Just had to sew it myself instead of return. Hmm. Also, my ex girlfriend, uh, Jimmy Moore, had a giant bush. <laughs> uh, well, that was Mama C, aka Emilio Estevez. Um, I have something I want to read from your wife, actually. Um, but I think I'll do it after we talk about what uh, what we watched because it it what it relates. To, well, she didn't write it, but she posted it on Facebook, and I saw it, and I was like, "Oh, we should talk. We should uh, we should talk about this." It's casting for um for what we watched. <laughs> so just to get everyone out. Oh, of, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah. So just to get everyone out of suspense, uh, because I'm sure you're. You're on the edge of your seats. So, oh, what did they watch? What could it possibly be? Um, we watched that Tiger. And also the episode title will tell you what we're watching. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I didn't think about that because, yeah, I would have already titled this and then put some weird description into it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Surprise. We watched uh, Tiger King, uh, the, uh, the what's his name, Joe Exotic story. <laughs> I I said to Mike, hey, maybe we should watch this. And Mike said, uh, I've already seen it. And I was like, okay. And he goes, Would you, are you going to have time to watch it? And I was like, oh, probably. So I watched the, the, like, I watched the first episode. And from watching the first episode, I was like, oh, I, I have to finish this. I binged this thing straight because I just couldn't stop watching it. It was like, it was like a car crash. Uh, it you know in slow motion. It was like watching the Zabruder yes. film <laughs> mixed with like frame by frame. Yeah, exactly. And mixed with like uh, I don't know, like a, a Hershey's Parade. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was, was like a uh, if like a professional wrestling organization storyline had come to life. Yes, that is the best. That is the best. Um, the best, uh, example I've heard that that is, that's the best analogy for this. It's like a professional wrestling storyline came to life. Oh my God. And uh, it's the cast of characters. <laughs> so first of all, just right off the bat, I want to say, uh, not my wife, Carol with an E. I fucking hate this woman. As soon as, as soon as I heard PETA. I was like, like her working with Peta and whatever. Cause I, I don't like Peta. Sorry guys. I just don't. Um, as Mike can attest, uh, I, I like animals. We have animals. I, you know, we treat animals well. I hate hearing stories about people abusing animals, but Peta is usually pretty insane. Like I've heard a lot of, uh, I've heard a lot of things, read a lot of stories about stuff that they've done. That's, uh, you know, I, I think they're as much of a menace as, as almost anything else. Um, but, uh, yeah, which is a perfect analogy for this movie. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. But for those of you who haven't seen it, just watch it. First of all, uh, and, and before you listen to our discussion about it, just watch it. But M Mike, I guess before we get like into the weeds of it, what did you think of it overall? I really liked it. It seemed like, uh, it was very riveting, the storytelling, um, you know, the way they unraveled the information, because each episode was like a different, weirder layer of an onion. Like, you know, it became more rotted and uh, just odd, you know, the further you went into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know how they kept it, like pulling out new information that was even stranger than the previous information. It was just so weird. Like, it's like it's, it's, it's like it doesn't seem like a fictional story it could be more fantastical. Yeah, seriously. Like, when... They, you know, first of all, they introduce you to to um, Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic, yep. And <laughs> you learn that he has, um, you know, he has. Well, I don't know if you learned this in the first episode. I'm trying to remember now. But you learn that he has two husbands. Uh, he's gay. He has two husbands, and um, <laughs> both he uh, married at the age of 19. He's 
I think like 30 years old or something like that. Maybe not 30, 30, 33, I think he says. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, 33, 32, something like that. Um, he had married in, you know, obviously not like a legal ceremony, but it's, uh, you know, like mm-hmm. a universalist church or something like that. Right. And like he, so I don't like, like I said, this, you don't find this out till a little bit later, but I mean, I kind of suspected it when he's talking to the second 19 year old that he marries, or he's talking about the second 19 year old that he married. And he's like, you know, we're driving back or whatever. And, and I was like, so how straight are you? <laughs> And he goes, well, I'm pretty straight. And he's like, oh, do you ever watch porn? And if you do, do you like small cocks or big cocks? And he's like, well, you know, you like the big hard cocks or whatever. And he's like, well, then you're not that gay. Um, or you're not that straight. And uh, it's pretty clear that he's not gay. <laughs> but, yet, right. but yet he still somehow, somehow this dude, and, and then it comes as a shock later when you find out that his other husband is also not gay. So, right. so somehow this dude convinced two straight people to be gay in a relationship with him. Uh, I mean, I guess they were having sex with women too. Um, and I, I assume that a lot of it has to do with the meth that he was feeding them. <laughs> but geez, oh, Pete's uh, just crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. There's two parts of this that are like straight from like a Joe Rogan joke. So like the the fact that there are like more tigers in the state of Texas than there are in the wild, which apparently is a true fact, and yeah. this is a testament to that. Yeah. And also that there's two types of uh, gay people, gay men, like actual gay men, and then uh, gay men that were tricked by really clever gay men. Which this totally is what happened in this situation. He like he tricked them. Seriously. <laughs> It was it was like he basically just made an argument. Like he was trying to make a logical argument where he's like, oh, but you're really yeah, okay, you got me uh, I guess I'm not I'm not straight then. Yeah. Oh my god. But yeah, so uh this dude had a bunch of tigers, basically, uh and other types of cats. Yeah, and he and he had a zoo that he would charge people admission to come into and it seemed to be pretty successful. Yeah, it's it definitely seems like it. Um there were a couple other people in the area that he had friends, like uh, one of my favorite characters, uh, Doc uh, Ard- Ardent or whatever his name is. And Antis, maybe? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> who, who looks who looks very similar to the uh, character from RoboCop 2, the bad guy Kane. Yes, he does. And he has like, a very cult-like appearance. My wife pointed out that he looks a lot like Tim Robbins, and that would definitely be uh, you know good mm-hmm. casting for that. Yep, yeah, I, I like Tim Robbins... Uh, in that role as well. But, uh, but yeah, and apparently that guy is just running a straight up cult. <laughs> and instead of, and because this guy has three uh, wives. Yeah. Instead of, cause he's instead of other men, he, he likes women. So he uh, gets women when they're like 17 and uh, somehow tr- uh, tricks them or compels them to stay with him. And, uh, on his little like ranch area. And he's also doing financially well. Yeah. Oddly enough, each of the women he's bought like a, their own house. Like they yeah. have, like, it's like a giant, like, you know, mansion. They each of them have in this preserve where he has his zoo, which is in uh, Myrtle beach, South Carolina, mm-hmm. whereas Joe exotic is in Oklahoma. Um, yeah. Win, I don't remember what part of Oklahoma. When something, when, when at something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. When that, but, uh, but yeah, so, <laughs> And then the third character in, in this, at least at the beginning, the third major character is uh, Carol Bre- Bricken or Brecken or something. I don't remember. The woman that killed her husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the first episode, we see how Joe is like this kind of wacky character. He's like, he really legitimately is like a wrestling character. Like, if he had fought the Macho Man back in a 19, uh, you know, 99, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, okay, so, like, oh my god! And like, you get like the hints that he's involved in some kind of crime. We get the idea that he's in jail. He's like calling from the prison, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember if they reveal what happens, but what happened is he uh, he he was um, implicated in a murder for hire plot for trying to uh, hire a hitman to kill Carol. Yeah. In the second episode, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, Car- but this this episode sh- this show should be called By the Way. <laughs> Right. It's like, oh, by the way, Carol is suspected of killing her husband. And here's a bunch of evidence that makes it seem like she probably really did kill her husband. 
Yes, and also uh, Joe made a bunch of songs about this. And, oh uh, my music god! Videos. One of the best. And, one of the best and things I about know, him. I don't know how he got the person he got uh, to play Carol. I thought it was actually Carol at first. So did I. I was like, wait, what? Did he just like convince her to I walk around to be in the video? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> But somehow we find out Joe's making menacing videos against her. He's saying he's going to kill her. He's shooting things that look like her. There's her logo with bullet holes over. Oh yeah, yeah. He hates her because she wants to shut him down because he's he's breeding the these cats and he's uh, exploiting them by uh, charging people to pet them and and stuff like that. And, and he's suspected she, as one of the biggest tiger breeders in the country. He's yeah. selling these for like two thousand a pop. You know, just. Tigers, tigers. He's because he's got a lot of massive legal fees because uh, Carol has sued him because they uh, basically uh, and very obviously stole Carol's company's logo. Oh yes, yeah, really smart idea by the way. Yeah, and I mean because her, her, she gets like the most views on YouTube and Facebook, and like when you search, you know, a big cat rescue, uh, Carol's company comes up. So he called it entertainment, I believe. Yeah, yeah, big cat rescue entertainment. And as her, yeah. her and the little, entertainment was like kind of like you know yeah. created in the background of the uh, advertisement. Yep, and they they both used snow leopard like eyes and everything. It was it was like he way even got too a close. stuffed rod extension that would route it to his uh, his own uh, company. Yeah, just to get to cause further confusion with the brand. It was very clear what he was trying to do, and it was like a really bad decision. But I thought it was funny. This this is kind of like a throwaway thing. But Shaq is in the movie for, for like a very brief second <laughs> where Shaq apparently visits Joe Exotic and buys a couple tigers from him because he, he brags about how he's, uh, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, came back with a couple tigers from my, my pal Joe's place. Yeah, because we, we also realized that this whole time, uh, this, this footage that they show is mostly from a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because there was a guy who was trying to film a reality show about Joe Exotic. He, he wanted to sell it to the Discovery Channel. And rightly so, I think it would have been a pretty captivating you know, uh, show. It would be almost like a, uh, what do you call it, the Duck Dynasty guys or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, you know, there at least would be a, a, a brief, at the very mo- least, sensation. You know, the uh, Joe Exotic show. I do. The I think the guy's name is Robert Robert Kirkman, uh, something like I that. I think so. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I I kind of recognized him from like way back when in Inside Edi- from Inside Edition, and then they showed a clip from Inside Edition. I was like, I knew I recognized that voice because he's got kind of a distinct voice. Um. And yeah, he. Yeah, I was trying to place his accent, but yeah, he's got a very distinct, you know, way of speaking. But definitely, he was uh, a total like he was he 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 like you said he knew exactly what he had. He was like, "This is a fucking shit show." But I love the way he talks. He's like, "Yeah, he was fucking around with it, uh, alligators or something, some shit." <laughs> and like, it's funny too because at first they show like the mostly positive footage of him talking about Joe mm-hmm. and the. Of the uh, series again, it's just it can be. He's like, yeah, this guy's a fucking moron, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're the part where like one of the employees of forums gets bitten off. Yes, but the, the f- really fuck up part about that that I noticed, that a lot of people seem to have noticed, was that when you see Joe, he's wearing like a uh, jacket that has like an ambulance sy- symbol on the. Yeah. So so this implies that he wouldn't change into this jacket because he knew he'd be on camera and he wanted to be seen with his jacket on. So that was a higher priority to him than, you know, attending to his, uh, his wounded, uh, you know, right. Yeah, exactly. And also, and also when he's alone, like the first thing he says, like, Oh, I'll never come back from this financially. It's like, okay, <laughs> we get it. Oh my God. Yeah. And she comes back to work right away because she doesn't want uh, it to be bl- bad publicity, but every, every relationship. Because Joe kind of has a cult going too. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And as they say, like he, he finds people that are, you know, they're destitute, they're, they're homeless. They've just come out of jail or something like that. And he's like, well, if this is the only thing they have and we treat him even halfway decent, they'll, love, <laughs> they'll love it. And by halfway decent, he means yeah, they all have like, he means giving them expired meat from uh, Walmart. Yeah, that was one of the most disgusting parts. Uh, well, actually, I think they all like, have trailers they live in, and I think he pays them like either 100 or $150 a week Yeah, for what they describe as 12 to 18-hour days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah the, the way they get meat for the animals is like Walmart, they cite it specifically, but other companies will give them their expiring meat. 
then you'll know, give it to the animals, but then also the workers will take it. And then uh, at one point they have a, a pizza restaurant, and they imply that that's where that meat was coming from as well. And I uh, I almost uh, threw up, and I'm thinking about throwing up just thinking about that. It's yeah, so disgusting. Yeah, absolutely awful. But every relationship in this in this show, whether it's whether it's Joe and Jeff or um or like Joe and uh you know Kirkman or Joe and uh that one dude uh Arnett or whatever his name is every basically every relationship in this show deteriorates at some point it starts out as like oh we're friends and then it just like breaks down into oh he's an asshole <laughs> there's a lot of backstabbing and hatred um yeah so he uh, Joe gets sued by um by uh Carol and her mm-hmm. husband and their company and then, um, and then at this point, like uh, we cut to Joe saying on camera when he knows there's a camera on him that he's like, "Oh yeah, none of my assets are in my name. You know, I I put everything in everybody else's name. You know, for seeing this, which is mm-hmm. illegal. So he's you know yeah. on tape doing this. So basically, gets a judgment against him for like a million dollars, and they're they're threatening to like you know take his parents home from him since you know that's in his name or like there's some way the assets are commingled. So right. Carol's just really putting the screws to him because she has him. You know, he's been torturing her for years. She has him right where she wants him, and she's just squeezing him as hard as he can. Yeah, pretty, pretty ruthlessly uh, as well. Like she does, she does not. Not that anyone really does, but she doesn't really come off very well in this entire documentary, really. Um, because no, because she also in the early stages was basically doing what they were doing, having yeah. like a tiger show, and then like you know breeding cats. I think they said as well. But then she kind of made a. You know, she changed. You know, her path. She's like, oh, actually, I'll be like the because her her zoo is really no better, if not worse, than the other ones. I mean, they're just animals in cages. It's not really like mm-hmm. a good zoo at all. I mean, they're these like giant cats that you know have a tiny little space, and I mean, you might have like you know some educational information in front of you about them at Carol's place, but her her, her conditions were worse than the other ones. Like, yeah. uh, Joe and his people wouldn't like they kind of like you know infiltrated it and they like had secret cameras and stuff and. It was not, you know, they didn't have as many cats as they said they had. And all this stuff. Joe flew a helicopter over it. It was, it's a crazy, crazy show. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so she sues him, and she ends up winning, like you said, uh, and and really trying to squeeze him and everything. And then that's when Jeff comes into the picture. So this guy, um, he's. I'm trying to remember exactly. If there's a dictionary definition of sleazeball, he's right oh, next to that. Absolutely. He he splits his time between Vegas and Oklahoma, I guess. And he As one does. Right. And he is also somehow you know what else I learned from this documentary is that the seedy underbelly of America, the you know, like rednecks and shit, they're all into uh it's not like the East Coast elites that are into these like eyes wide shut, like wearing masks, orgy parties and stuff and and having open relationships. It's these rednecks. They're all of them are in yeah. some polyamorous relationship. Yeah, every, every in this for sure. Yeah, like, even like um, he said Jeff and his wife are both openly like mm-hmm. into other women. So yeah. They fool around with them all the time and that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, that that one guy, the, the guy who calls himself Doc, who, who his doctorate is apparently in mis- mystical science, according to one of his wives. <laughs> yeah. but when you first like see his house, he's got this giant couch. He's like, oh yeah, that's clearly made for like multiple adult people to be on at any given time. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. But yeah, Jeff has some dubious source of income. They later like people are claiming that he actually just rents his house in Lamborghini. So mm-hmm. we don't quite know exactly how he gets his money, but he, you know, to help Joe out, he buys a zoo and you know they kinda have a uh in de facto but not de jure partnership where Joe kinda, you know, sort of helps out, but Joe also, you know, decides to run for governor at, under the Libertarian Party at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's got so he hires another person to help with that, which is a guy he knows from Walmart. He goes to a guy he knows from Walmart uh, who sells him ammunition, which he does a lot, according to the uh, campaign manager. And then he goes, uh, there's some weird conversation where he goes, oh, yeah, my dream job is to be a campaign manager. Well, guess what? You're my campaign manager now. The camp- the campaign manager is one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite people in this documentary. I love when he's like, he's talking about the um, when the FBI gets involved in everything and he's like... Uh, He's like, you know, I, um, he's like, I don't, I don't, uh, like the federal government. He's like, I, uh, you know, I don't want to be on the wrong side of the federal government. I don't really want to work with the federal government. He's like, in fact, I'm a libertarian. So fuck the federal government. Right, right. 
<laughs> he's like, but uh, you know, I like I don't want to be part of this shit. And um, yeah, but, but yeah, the everything the guy said is, and he seems like the easily the smartest person in the documentary because he's he's talking about Joe and he's like, you know, running for president, running for governor, and he's like, he's like, we start running for governor, and he's like, and Joe thinks he's gonna win, like he's like, he's yeah, not yeah, gonna, he's not gonna <laughs> win, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. And speaking of speaking of the campaign manager, he was the one who was sitting there while uh, one of Joe's husbands, the, who apparently was obsessed with guns that we kind of hear a little bit about now. Mm-hmm. He, uh, you know, had jokingly pointed a gun to the campaign manager. He goes, oh, don't worry. It's a Ruger. It doesn't have a magazine in it. Uh, so, you know, it, you can't fire it. So he decides to show him that that's true by putting the gun to his head and pulling the trigger. Yeah. And it fires and he kills himself and they have a they have a camera which is like the perfect angle for this because it's like the, the guy who kills himself is behind the camera where you can see it but you can perfectly see the reaction of the campaign manager and it's like oh my god oh yeah yeah it's it's quite the timing of the footage is perfect it's quite a moment so yeah this moron uh you know fucking shoots himself on accident and um i mean rest in peace but uh <laughs> And then Joe uh, shows up to the funeral, and he talks about how uh, how he loved his balls. Yeah, um, you know, he called them golden nuggets in front of you know his family, and then of course he breaks into a song that he wrote. Jesus Christ! I forgot he did that. <laughs> golden yeah, I, nuggets. I I, I I I I was waiting for like you know everyone to suddenly turn to the camera and like you know like like ah at that point like it's like a brilliant like you no know, document. I, mean, I I I would not be surprised if it was a prank still, just because. It's so ridiculous. Everything that happens in this movie is insane. Oh, prank you? You're my hero. Yeah, so three months later, he marries another uh, 19-year-old man. Mm -hmm. This one, I think, actually might be gay, though. So maybe he learned his lesson. Yeah, I think this guy is actually gay. It's weird. Um, It's kind of like how all those celebrities die at 27 years old. Is there something about 19-year-old? Did something bad happen to Joe when he was 19 years old? Is that what this is about? I I don't know what's going on. I I don't know. Maybe he wants to be seasoned adults for a year. I guess. (laughs) Yeah, then his uh, previous uh, husband that killed himself, he invites his mother to the wedding, which apparently is just like four people. And uh, so she goes, yeah, he clearly did that just so it would show that I approve of him being remarried so quickly. Yeah. And that's 100% what happened there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, really weird. And uh, people, because, and, you know, they're, they're they're talking about the documentary and they're like, you know, he didn't really get over the the death until until he married, uh, you know, this guy and everything. And I'm thinking about it as the documentary is going on. And I'm like, well, you know, I can kind of understand that. Like, people need time to grieve. People need time to move on. And then once you kind of, like, find another relationship, a lot of times it does help start healing wounds. And then, uh, and then like, the next sentence they say is, like, so three months after the guy killed himself, he married him. And I was like, oh, fuck, three months. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that, that that is pretty fast. You know, this guy just needs to fuck. Uh, <laughs> seriously. I don't know why he, why, why did he have to marry them? I don't understand that part. No, either. Uh, he just, he, yeah, he then, loves the traditional uh, uh, gender roles in marriage or something. I don't know. Right. So part of the uh, part of the uh, settlement is Carol wants to get all these tapes that they have from the documentary. Mm-hmm. And then, lo and behold, uh, someone acts, someone firebombs the tapes, which they say is clearly clearly arson from the very beginning. The the police know this. Yeah. It also killed the gators, and uh, it kind of seems like Joe did it. Yeah, that's the impression that I get. <laughs> I mean, he blames Carol, but I mean, it it seems like Joe did this, and he was very suspicious before this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe was conveniently away at a funeral in Chicago when this happened. And yeah, it really seems like he he did this. But yeah, and yeah, he, so he, he just to worry he, about. he just happens to have a video of somebody too, by the way, uh, that he says is video of like right before this fire is going on, and the guy's walking like uh, Bigfoot, you know, where he's like, yeah, yeah, he's moving his <laughs> arms like that and everything, and he's like, oh, that's the way Kirkman walks. It's probably him. Right, yeah, and then of course he blames Kirkman, which would make no sense because he he this is all his money he's investing mm-hmm. all his time, you know, on this. Yeah, and he this is what he thought he was going to make a bunch of money off of, which, as you know, you pointed out, he probably would have. 
Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And Joe would have gotten what he wanted to be a celebrity. But, I mean, I'm sure Joe – I mean, I think Joe would have been under, you know, suspicion for more crimes if mm. he had had these tapes leak out. Because they did show a little bit of animal abuse from uh, Joe where he's pulling, like, a tiger cub under a fence at one point. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jeff, his new friend who is pushing him out because everyone Jeff gets a hold of, uh, he, he loses his friendship with, like, almost immediately. <laughs> yes. He points that out. Uh, seemingly with no self awareness at all, Jeff points that out at some point in the documentary. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that might mean it's you, Jeff. Right. Apparently, he choked his first wife, so that's not right. good. This guy's a real jerk. Um. Yeah, it's a real mess. Um. So then, uh, then Joe and Jeff and this guy who uh, Jeff describes as a transient, who he had hired to uh. <laughs> Yes. To work there, and this guy doesn't listen to Joe at all, and he back, back talks him, and you know he's just very—he's uh, just an asshole, basically. I mean, if that's intentionally Jeff put, put him there for that purpose, right? I don't know, but he—he's someone who looks after Jeff's interests, but he's only a handyman, so it's not much. He's you know, yeah, and he has a—he has a teardrop tattoo, which uh, is supposedly indicates he's murdered someone. Yeah, so this guy, um, he, um. And he suddenly, you know, trusts Joe enough to take out a hit for him, mm-hmm. and then you know, like he gets, he, he just decides to not do it at the last minute. I, I really think this is just Jeff setting Joe up. Is that what you think happened here? Yes, I mean, it seems pretty clearly what happened. Yep, I agree. I think that yeah, because Jeff and his buddy, you know, I remember her Carol. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear on that. Yeah, yeah, they like supposedly. Now here's the thing. <laughs> I don't understand why, and like Jeff says, he put like Joe puts out, "Hey, we found where the the bitch lives" or whatever, and shows a picture, and he's like, "What are you doing? What are you not? Are you stupid or something like that?" And it's like Joe seems like he's not the smartest person in the world, <laughs> right? Know? But I don't think he's that dumb. Like right before, I don't know though. Wasn't he also like on tape asking someone like if they could do this for him? Well, that's the thing is, like, I think he talked a lot about it. I think he talked a lot about uh, um, of saying, like, hey, you know, I want her dead or I'd like to kill her or somebody should kill her or whatever, you know. Um, But I don't think, like, he actually said, hey, I will pay you to kill her. Please do this. Um, And, and I don't I don't know. I don't like like you said, I think it's pretty clear that this is Jeff, like maybe even Joe really kind of wanted this to happen. But I think all of this is Jeff basically just setting him up for this murder for hire shit sure yeah so now uh jeff is um you know hanging out with this other guy who they showed earlier in the thing they're gonna make the, like the world's greatest animal preserve in oklahoma um joe's in jail carol is you know still on the loose right <laughs> that's a good way to put it oh my god she's such a menace <laughs> yeah joe's uh joe's new husband though is still pining after from it seems like they actually does seem like you know they have a legit relationship yeah well which is good but now joe is like turning on everybody joe's like uh oh i'll uh, oh, like, he's working with pita yeah he, he's trying to burn everybody down yeah he's like well fuck you all i'll burn i'll, I'll get all you guys um and that i get, doc guy he says killed like tigers when they got to a certain age and buried them on his uh farm or you yeah. know preserve whatever Cremated. compound that needs to work yeah he's got like a tiger holocaust going on it's no good uh, but uh but yeah so um what was i gonna say um oh the it says at the very end that that jeff guy um got raided and uh indictments might be coming down for him soon i don't i don't know what's going on with him i haven't really looked up uh any follow-ups to his story yet but uh it sounds like you know he might be going away as well yeah this i, I really enjoyed this it was like a crazy adventure from start to finish <laughs> it got weirder and weirder and mm-hmm good directing good you know writing as far as like you know sequencing everything uh, uh fisher stevens i think was also involved in this one like he did the blackfish movie oh okay. so clearly he's like some, some rescue you know he's clearly into some kind of animal rescue animal rights thing now but i haven't seen blackfish but i really like this movie or i guess miniseries you would say yeah so fisher stevens has uh has stopped uh you know portraying indians in the oh no he still does that <laughs> but he doesn't get paid to do it anymore <laughs> that's right he's got he's got some bob crane type uh, home movies going on <laughs> uh but yeah so I, I like you said i think the analogy of this being like an onion is also a very good analogy 
though, like you said, the way that the the documentary is edited together, uh, the way it's just the structure of it all, it's brilliant. It's a very, very well made documentary, and uh, I think it's definitely worth uh, anybody going to see. It's you know, it's seven episodes long. They're each about forty or forty five minutes or so long, so it's not a ton of time. It's a limited series, which you know, obviously, it's a real life thing, so it definitely has to be. But I'm I'm glad for that. Uh, although I've read things that uh, we might get uh, some sort of spinoff type thing uh, with Kate McKinnon playing uh, Carol uh, Baskin. So I mean, who knows? But uh, but yeah, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, and then just quick, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, like I I said, was uh, this thing that Alex posted about. Um, the if they if they were going to make this into a uh like a movie the the casting of it which i think is so most of this casting is pretty brilliant i think um so for the uh and mike i'll I'll read these out and you just kind of tell me what you what you think about these um the uh the dude uh, john renke the one that uh has no legs uh, that lost his legs in the zip lining accident uh matthew mcconaughey yeah, that's a good that's a good choice for that one. For sure. He definitely uh right body type, right look. McConaughey can definitely get into that. This next one I think is the be- is the best one. JK Simmons as Rick Kirkham. Yeah, that that would be a good one. Uh, he could do the accent. I like uh, JK Simmons a lot. Mhm. Um Dean Winters uh you know, I recognize him kind of, but I'm not super familiar with him. He was he was uh, he was on Oz. He was on SVU. He's That's in those, right. Uh, some kind of commercial. He's Mr. Mayhem. I don't, is it Allstate? Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He was on. He was early early SVU, but he was on Oz. You know, he had a pretty big role on Oz. Oz is where I recognize him from now. But he, he was uh, uh, what's his fucking name? O'Reilly, right? Yeah. But him is Jeff Lowe, which is I think just about perfect. Yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, Channing Tatum is. John Finley, I think that's the uh, that's one of the husbands, right? Yeah, the one who inexplicably was wearing no shirt at all for some reason. <laughs> yes, the entire the entire interview, he has no shirt on, tattoos all over his body, and every time he smiles, you see those two teeth he's got left because he right because they were all in meth. We forgot to add that part. They yeah. were in meth a lot. Yeah. Uh, so Channing Tatum, yeah, knock out some of his teeth. I think that I think that works. Um, and Ch- Channing Tatum obviously will go without a shirt for, uh, or Aaron Paul, right? Aaron Paul would be good too, actually. Yeah. Um, Jeff Goldblum as Howard, uh, Baskin. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. He <laughs> seems to have his mannerisms even. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's a really weird guy. At one point he just like busts out into song to Carol for no reason. And that's just right. absolutely Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Like, you know, he's just been waiting. You know, he's got all the cameras are here. He just had to muster up the courage to, like, sing. What I want what I want them to do, though, if they make this... Well, they're not going to make this movie. But if they made this movie, what I'd want them to do is uh, have Jeff Goldblum sign on. Don't give him a script or anything like that. Just be like, um, okay, so Jeff, this woman right here is uh, your wife. Uh, and just be yourself. <laughs> and just let him go. I think it'd be perfect. It could be uh, Haley Joel Osment as James Gerritsen. That that is an inspired <laughs> choice. Yeah, that's very good because Harry Haley Joel Osment has. Uh, I don't know if he's lost weight, but he was uh, larger for a while there on Silicon Valley. Yeah, and he's just he's got that. What about that sequence with the guy where he's just on the jet ski very slowly <laughs> going up to the camera? Was, Why is it in there? I don't know. It's so weird. So it made like a funny joke on like Twitter. It's like like what what kind of a business does he run where like the signs blacked out and all he has is like ceiling fans in the show. Right. I think that um, I feel like that that was his that was his request, James Garretson, to have yes. that shot in the movie in order to uh, to do the interview. He's like, I'll do the yeah, interview. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah. I'll do the interview, but you you got to put this shot of me on a jet ski. Hey, you guys want to go jet skiing with me? I've been trying to get a video together for this for a while. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Oh, uh, Aaron Eckhart as Eric Cowie. I, yeah, that's not bad. I mean, yeah. it's not. Well, and whatever. That's not like a. I don't think you need like a high-powered actor for that role. No, I think you could do. Uh, 
something else for that. But uh, and then you got a teenage boy who never grew up for that role, right? John C. Riley as uh, Bagavin, which apparently means God or something like that. Doc Antle. See, I, I think uh, I think Alex is right that uh, Tim mm. Robbins would be perfect for that. I agree. I think Tim Robbins. I think Tim Robbins is a better choice. I, I hadn't really thought about it. But he, I think he's a better actor than John C. Riley. Not that John C. Riley is a bad actor. Yeah, but I, I think even the hair, I, I think, would work better um, from yeah. Tim Robbins. Yeah, I think it's just better all the way around. Uh, Adam Driver being the one that shoots himself as Travis uh, Montanato. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I think you need somebody younger, to be honest with you, and less like sinister looking. That's what I was going to say, is that I can see the like the superficial resemblance between the two of them, but I think yeah. you, I think you need someone younger though. Yeah, that's more like a lighthearted character, oddly enough, even though he shoots himself in the head at one point. Right. Oh, oh my I just have to mention before I forget my uh my eleven year old, she made like the the a hilarious joke, uh, because we were, I turned something on and it was Marky Mark. Mm-hmm. She goes, Oh, is that uh is that Keanu Reeves? I go, No. And I go, That's Marky Mark. She goes, Oh, I guess Marky Mark's a low rent Keanu Reeves. He kind of is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, and then let's see, Jay Smith Cameron, who I recognize, but I'm not, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known her name, but I recognize her uh, as Carol Baskin. Hmm. Carol Baskin reminds me of somebody. I don't know who. Like, she's very similar to somebody else. I think it's an actress. I just don't remember. She looks almost like her. I, what about, I think she's going to be, let me see, yeah, she'd be too old, but Susan Sarandon, I think, would be good in that role. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could totally see that. She kind of has the accent a little bit. And then if you got, if you did flashbacks of her when she was 20 and she first meets that husband that she probably killed, um, you could use, <laughs> you could use Susan Sarandon's daughter to do for that, for that. Well, again, that's my boy. Yeah, exactly. Like they did in That's My Boy. Exactly. And then um, uh, Danny Mc, Danny McBride is Joe Exotic. Yeah, that was that was my first. You know, I mean, that's almost the exact character he's playing in uh, that one show he was in down mm. and out in Beverly Hills. Yeah, Eastbound and Down. That's exactly what it's called. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was. I thought an obvious, obvious. I I, I wouldn't be shocked if it was his character. Has anybody seen Sasha Baron Cohen lately? Yeah. No shit. <laughs> Maybe that's what this is. Sasha Baron Cohen played every part. Yeah, like the Eddie Murphy esque uh, role. Oh God, uh, I love Sasha Baron Cohen. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what we watched. I-, I enjoyed it. I think if if you've seen it, uh, then obviously you know what we're talking about. If you haven't seen it, you should probably check it out. It's on Netflix. Easy to find. Uh, lots of people are watching it, so it's. Oh, I it's saw trending. both the Burt Kreischer and uh, Tom Segura comedy specials. Not a fan of either of them. They're not great. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'll watch those and we'll, we can talk about those next time too. Uh, as you know, and and we're gonna try to see just so everyone knows, so you can watch it in preparation if you want to. We're gonna try to see the hunt, um, if we can, but uh, no no promises. But we'll I'll definitely watch those comedy specials and we can talk about those too next week. Yeah, and Better Call Saul will catch up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, I did watch the last episode, which ended so fucked up. But, yeah, we'll we'll talk about uh, Better Call Saul next week. Um, but, yeah, that's it for this week. So, uh, you know, do all the, the stuff that we want you to do. Tell friends and all that stuff. And we will see you next time. Bye. See you next time.